What's up, guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this torpedo that you can play with in the water. I know it's not the most exciting thing, but it was something that interested me and I wanted to try to make electronics work underwater, so that's why I did this. And before the video starts, I'd like to say thank you guys so much for the support recently. I hit over 100 subscribers and that's crazy because I haven't put up anything in two months. So I'm really sorry about the lack of videos for the past two months, but I will try to get my ideas out there and try to keep building. Okay, let's get to the build. The materials I'm going to be using are this one and a quarter end cap, one and a quarter male and female adapters, heat shrink tubing, 100% uh, silicone adhesive, 9 volt battery, 9 volt battery connectors, toggle switch, doesn't need to be anything fancy, one and a quarter tubing, and this motor which I found already like this, waterproofed. I believe it's just a film canister that has one of those small DC motors in it and then they just shoved a bunch of wax or something in here so that it'd be waterproof. And then it has the wire sticking out and the little propeller. So I'm lucky enough to have this. Uh, I assume it's not the most difficult thing to make. You just need to poke a hole through the bottom of a film canister, but that's what I'll be using. First things first, I'm going to hook up the motor to the battery and the switch and seal it all up with heat shrink tubing, which should be pretty simple. So that's it. It's a really simple circuit. This, the 9 volt battery. One end connects to the switch, one end connects to the motor, and the motor, one end connects to the 9 volt battery, and one connects to the switch. And then when I switch this, if I have a 9 volt battery here, it turns on the little motor. I would advise everyone to make sure you have the proper size heat shrink tubing. Although it does shrink a lot, I bought heat shrink tubing that's just a little too big for this really small wire. Um, so there's a little bit of excess. It shouldn't matter too much. So now we're only working with the hardware. I'm going to cut a short piece so I can glue the cap and female adapter together. Then I'll put them onto the male adapter like this. Then I will see what length looks right for the torpedo and cut it. So now I'm going to cut and glue the top. So if you don't know what I just did, I put on each fitting, measured the length that they fit onto the pipe and added both lengths together so I know the exact amount of pipe that I need to cut so that this female and end cap fit together perfectly like this and don't have a weird gap of pipe in between them. I'm using one part PVC cement. Now that I have the top piece glued and the male adapter glued to the main body of the torpedo, I can figure out what length I want. And I was thinking that 12 inches was probably a good length for this torpedo. It doesn't need to be much longer. There's no purpose to having it very long. So I'm just going to measure out 12 inches over here, cut the pipe, and then I can work on putting this motor inside of the torpedo body. I realize that I haven't explained why I have a separate top section. Um, this is so that when I have the motor and the switch in the device, I have the battery as easy access that'll sit inside of here. So that if I need to change the battery, I can just unscrew the top and then change the battery and it won't have to be completely useless. Next part of this process is to drill a hole through the side of this PVC and make it large enough that the switch can fit in, but not too large that water will get in. Then afterward, we'll seal it with the silicone so that hopefully the whole entire system will be waterproof. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off these little on and off thing. There's just a little simple ring. You unscrew it and you pull this off. Now this makes the switch a little bit longer and easier to manipulate inside of the tube. 
So I'm gonna measure the diameter of this piece. I'm gonna drill it out of the PVC, making sure that it's close enough to the front that the battery is gonna stick out and I'm gonna be able to access it easily. And then we're gonna place the switch inside and put silicone around it to make sure that it is waterproof. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of scrap wood and drilled holes in it to make sure that the diameter was proper and really did fit very tightly with this part of the switch. And my first hole was too big, so it's good that I tested it. I've moved down. Currently I'm using a 31 64th bit. Uh, and for anyone in metric, I'm sorry, I have no idea what the heck that is in metric. Um, but now that I've drilled that and it fits properly, I am ready to drill a hole in the torpedo body and make it final. Sadly, the bit did decide to wander right at the end, so there is this small gap right here. Shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as I liberally use silicone to seal it, but this is what it'll look like. It'll just have the little lever sticking out of the top. I quite like that, and I hope it really does seal properly. That is the next step, to take the sealant, liberally use it, and hopefully have the trigger stay where I want it. Jimmy this button to stay there while I'm working on it. I've shoved a bunch of tissues inside the tube. Hopefully it won't move too much and can dry properly. We will see though. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I have to work on putting the motor in the back. Uh, the only problem is there's a small lip right here uh, that protrudes too much to be able to fit inside the tube. So I could just take it off, but I think I'm going to try to take a box cutter and trim around it. And if I screw up the lid, then I just take it off anyway. So win-win. Now that it's trimmed and I can fit it inside of the tube, I'm going to put a bunch of silicone all over the outside of this and then shove it inside that tube to make the most watertight seal ever. So now that I have the switch and the motor installed, I'm going to have to add some weight into the back um, just so that it stays under the water and can actually propel under the water. Uh, I don't exactly know how much I need to keep it neutrally buoyant, so I'm hoping that this will not be too much because I'd much rather it float a little bit than be too heavy. So all I'm going to do is slide the nail in, take a tissue, and then shove it right there just so that the nail doesn't move around and will stay in this portion of the body, hopefully keeping it balanced while the head is full of air. Also, I'd like to note that the silicone itself was not strong enough to hold the trigger in place, so I've added the little ring with the threaded bits on. I don't know why I didn't do that before, and now I have to cover this whole entire area with silicone again and wait 24 hours for it to cure. Then I can add fins onto the back to keep the whole rig from rotating. So for the fins, I'm gonna use acrylic only because that's what I have with me. I'm sure you can use ABS or just cut one of these tubes open and bend it with uh, a heat gun. I got this design drawn up and I'm going to just trace it onto the acrylic and cut out three of them and put them on the torpedo body. To attach the fins, I'm gonna be using hot glue and to hopefully allow the acrylic to attach a little bit better to the torpedo body, I'm going to sand it. Um, I'm sure there are better ways to attach it other than hot glue. I can't think of anything right now though, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it though. If you have anything better, then you should use that. Anyway, I'm gonna draw the design onto the acrylic three times and go cut it out on the bandsaw.
So now that I have all of the pieces cut out and I've sanded off all the rough edges um, and I've sanded this surface, I'm just gonna put in a really fat bead of hot glue and sink this in there. And hopefully it'll hold well enough um, to last a, a long time. So now I have my fins attached. I've put some thread tape on the threads just to make sure there's no leaks there. And I've painted the whole thing the color that I desire. Painting's not necessary, but you know, it just it looks so bad with all the glue and, and stuff that I assume any logical swimming pool would be like, oh, what the heck is that? And not let you bring it into the swimming pool. So now that I have everything painted and the fins attached, time to go test it. all the way to the end of this video. I'd like to say this project was fun. It was difficult to work with water and electronics, um, but as long as you're using lots of silicone, it works. Uh, when you guys, if you guys do it, make sure your motor's strong enough. I think if I had a stronger motor, this would be a lot more entertaining to chase in the water. But other than that, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. Uh, give me a rating. If you think I suck, tell me I suck. If you think I'm good, tell me I'm good. Uh, if you have any suggestions for anything you want me to build, please leave them down in the comments below. Consider subscribing. I'm Audi.